welcome to my studio. I'm Laura Donnelly and I'm going to share with you today how to make a pinch pot. I have a variety of pinch pots here that and I've made several. Um, the one that I'm showing you right now is filled with my favorite nuts. Um, pinch pots can be very ornate. This one's taken a lot more time than probably the ones that we'll be making today. I understand that you came to the Market Street Art Spot and bought your clay. So let's take a look at what else came with your clay and what we're going to be doing with it today. So in your bag, you have a little sponge. These are very modest tools and a sponge. Along with the sponge is the spoon and just a stirring, couple of stirring sticks, some newspaper, and of course, the clay. Let me tell you about the clay. It comes from Mother Earth. You have not quite a pound of it and it is going to be dishwasher safe, microwavable, you can put it in the oven, and very malleable right now, ready to have your signature put on it. The first thing we wanna do, actually I'll get rid of these tools right now. The first thing you wanna do with your clay is to get rid of that blocky form and press and form it into a ball. While I'm doing this, I think I should probably let you know that I am not going to be creating the same one from beginning to end for you. Kind of like a cooking show, as you're working on getting this into a ball, I have done mine into a ball. Let me tell you a few things that might have to happen. You might notice some cracks. Go ahead and just smooth those over. Try to avoid putting any water on here because you're gonna end up with a muddy mess on the outside. So if you do have some, just smooth them out like that. Okay, this is the time period where you're getting to know your clay. It's also a time period where you can listen to quiet music, take your time, little reflection. When I teach this in class, it's the one time that I ask my students, please don't talk. So I'm encouraging you to do the same. After you're finished and you have that into a nice ball, we're going to take that ball and cradle it in our, the palm of one hand while we push with the other one. This is a push, but we can call it a pinch because what we're doing is we're pinching the clay between our thumb and our palm. In doing that, you wanna go down until you can feel your thumb on the other side, but don't make a hole or else it's, you're going to lose all the nuts, of course. Or M&Ms or your finest jewelry. The next thing we're going to do is start pinching and turning. As you pinch and turn again, you might find that you'll see some cracks. I'm not going to get too upset over those. We're just gonna smooth them over. Smooth them out. The best place to start pinching is at the bottom 
of the wall. So this is in your hand and we're going to pinch way down inside and turn. You can see that the hole is getting larger and larger. A nice turntable to have is that piece of paper that I provided you. And in this way, you can almost like a potter's wheel, turn as you continue to pinch, making the wall thinner and thinner, and in a lot of cases, higher and higher. You can make this any shape you want. I'm staying with the basic. Just a circle, but you can imagine that if you wanted this to be a triangle, a square, if you want it to be oblong, all of that would work as well. Continue to go back down to the bottom. We don't want heavy bottoms. As I'm pinching my thumb down here with my fingers, as my thumb is on the inside, my fingers are trying to work the clay up from the outside. I've over accented that. So this is the real process in action here. I'm just trying to pull up. And as you can see, I'm continuing to keeping this going around. The outside is starting to take on a very unique character. In some cases, maybe more cracks than you would want, and maybe yours isn't cracking this much. I like and will decide to embrace those cracks. I also like and embrace the idea that this is a little bit not perfect on top. I think this side's higher than the other. And I like that, an undulating rim. If you don't like that, turn it upside down, give it a little tap, and you'll begin to see that your top is flatter. Like I said before, I like that undulating rim, handmade look. The outside can be ready for decorations and I'm gonna share with you how to do that. The inside, however, I'd like to share with you how to make it as smooth as possible because you just don't know what's going to go in there. You want it to be nice and smooth so those M&Ms will slide out you want to make it nice and smooth so that you can reach in and scoop out and or clean anything you have in there. The way that I do that is I cradle the outside that I'm working on and I take my thumb as a tool and rub like so. It's very important for this hand to be here and it's like stroking it, smoothing it out. might change the shape only slightly, especially if you have your hand in the background as your support. Once you have your inside nice and smooth, give your pot a little tap on the bottom so it's not rounded. Okay, like I said before, I'm embracing these cracks. I do think that mine's probably cracking a little bit more 
than yours is going to because of the lighting situation, possibly drying things out a little more. I've been working with this clay for a little bit now, so it might be a little bit more cracked than yours is going to. If you're very frustrated by that, you can get yourself just a small amount of water. And let me give you a hint. Put the water on your fingertips and your hands, not directly on the clay. You're putting it on kind of like hand cream and then working it in. By working it in, I'm also cradling the outside. Let's see if we can get some of this nice and smooth here to give you an example. So the water's on my hands. And I'm working at it, at it like this. Notice that I'm supporting it from my hand on the inside this time, since I'm working on the outside. And you would just work around the entire pot like that. Personally, I'm loving these. I like all those marks. It's kind of like the clay telling me a history that it has. You might like it better this way. That's all fine. Also in your kit, I put a sponge. So if you're finding some difficulty in using just your fingers, you can get the sponge wet, again, some water, and squeeze it out. So that it's just damp because we're not wanting to add water to the outside. It's gonna hurt the integrity. By doing this, again, now my hand's supporting on the inside. By doing this, this might give you a little more success than your finger. Now let's look at some ways that we can decorate. If you choose to, I really like this guy the way he is. So I'm gonna keep him the way he is and just bring out another one that I've worked on. So back to some of the tools. Now is a chance to have a lot of fun with making marks if you choose to. Notice once again that I have support on the inside. You can use a variety of things that you might find around your house. I'm using these modest tools that I put in the kit because they really can give you lots of interesting shapes and patterns. One thing you can do is with your fingers spread apart a little bit and the tool on the outside You would want to alter the shape that you have just done so it has a sense of design. With the form itself, that's something that's very doable. And the same with the spoon, just a found object from the kitchen and it's going to make just different kinds of marks.
Your mark making doesn't have to be in pattern form, sometimes random is the best way. Not in your kit, but if you find objects around the house, Can find another place to put this. Notice how my hand is on the inside. I'm supporting that all the time. After you've had some fun and would like to put your name on the bottom using actually the tool that I have in your kit, instead of digging, just score lightly your initials or your whole name. if you would like to try to fit it on there. Please put at least your initials so that we can make sure the pot gets back to the right full artist. Okay. When these are finished, I'm going to ask you to bring them back to the art spot We'll have a place in order for them to dry. While they're at your house, go ahead and set them to the side somewhere safe and just let them air dry. Very carefully bring them into the art spot where at that time, I will fire them once and then wax the bottom. I'll fire them a second time with a glaze to make them nice and shiny. The glaze protects the surface so that it can be used for food and in the microwave, dishwasher. And that's it. If you have any questions, you can email the art spot. And I hope you come back into the art spot if you really enjoy this, the clay will be available even after you've done one. The clay will still be available if you'd like another kit until July 19th. Okay, I hope you enjoy your pinch pots. Thanks.